On this inside line, I'm checking out one very unconventional E350 van. Let's get to it. Okay, so here today is a very familiar face to anybody that's been watching the channel for a while, especially one of the van videos. This is Chris Tuber from U-Joint Off-Road, and beside me is V4 2.0. Correct. All right, Correct. so what is this thing and how did it all come to be? Well, it's a second version of my flatbed van idea. I built the first one about 10 years ago. Um, and you know, whenever you build a rig, you're always thinking about, well, if I did it again, I'd do this or I'd do that. I'd like to change this and I'd like to change that. Um, so that's how this thing came about. So what did it start as? You know, I know a lot of people, I know with the first van, it looked like people think you just chopped a regular van and yeah. put this bed on it. So what did this thing start out as? So this, I, I went to the Ford dealer and ordered a brand new 2021 E350 cutaway chassis. So when it came, it was only, the body came to here and it was just covered in plastic. No bed, didn't even have tail lights on it. So it's an incomplete chassis cutaway. So from there, uh, we were able to order it with whatever powertrain that you wanted. Um, so what powertrain did you get to start off with? Yeah, so one of the main things that uh, drove me to build this uh, van rig, whatever you want to call it, was the uh, 7.3 Godzilla V8. Uh, when Ford released the crate motor, my first thought was, oh, I'll, I'll get this crate motor and put it in my old one, my green truck. And then I started thinking about motor swaps and all the other things involved with that. I said, you know what, while I can, I should just go order a brand new chassis. So I was able to sit down and order every single spec the way I wanted it um, at Ford. So the engine, uh, the gear ratio, the options for the interior. Um, and also it's what's really cool about the E-Series, you can still not get a lot of things. So you can order it without TPMS, um, stuff like that. All right. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, the reason this is V4 2.0 is he originally built this, it was for SEMA in what year? 2012. So 2012, and uh, it's had its own evolution, and I'll yeah. kind of show you that. And so the bed, which is all aluminum, was originally built for that SEMA truck. And kind of like, let's, let's, let's get into like what really makes this thing super special, which is obviously this one-off bed. Yeah. Yeah, this bed was, um, so a, an old buddy of mine helped me build it. Um, we built it, we cut it all with a table saw and a skill saw, which was really, really brutal and, um, and took forever. Um, so, and the bed was one, one, of the, one of the reasons I didn't want to sell the last rig was I didn't want to build a new bed because it's just so time consuming. Um, and also I was able to keep a lot of the parts off the last setup that I wanted to, like the rear suspension and the coilovers and a few other items. Um, but yeah, the bed is all aluminum. Uh, the boxes pass through side to side. There's lots of storage and uh, it just looks great. So some of the unique features about this bed, it's sort of like a three link uh, in its own way. And, and how does that uh, work? So it has two hard mounts up front and in the rear is a pivot. Uh, so what that does is it keeps basically the bed or anything bolted to the bed from being in a bind as the sus suspension uh, articulates and the frame twists. Right. All right, so let's get into the suspension. I know uh, at U-Joint you guys do a lot of leaf spring conversions uh, to make E-Series vans four-wheel drive. This is obviously not leaf sprung. So walk me through, let's uh, start at the front suspension. Uh, how is it set up? So the front is a three-link. Uh, it's got uh, King 12-inch travel, 3.0 coilovers. Uh, so three link with a uh, Pro Rock 60 uh, custom Dana 60 housing. Okay, and so uh, what was, uh, I know you use a lot of Ford series, like Super Duty axles, and you got a Dynatrack housing. Why go with the aftermarket housing for, for this? Like what was the, the big draw for that? Well, one of the, the biggest reason was, as I stated earlier, there were a lot of things I wanted to change. The turn and radius on the last rig was terrible. Um, the van frames are wider than trucks, and the vans also have tiny, teeny tiny wheel wells. So when you start putting a truck axle under a van frame with those small wheel wells for this type of suspension you run out of room really quick um, with our leaf spring kit it's not as uh, big of a deal because we put the spring under the frame but for this to mount that big of a coil over um, and still get your full steering you need some width so this axle housing is five inches wider than the standard dana 60 we use with our leaf spring kit okay now 
going back to suspension now out back uh what did you do i know you carried some stuff over from uh the original v4 and how's this set up yeah so the the van came with a, a dana 70 stock uh, it, which was also a bit of a surprise. It showed up, we ordered it as a single wheel, but then it showed up um, with as a dually. Oh. So I panicked at first, but then once we started pulling some dimensions and checking everything, it actually worked out well. It's actually a half inch wider than the Sterling that was in the last rig. Okay. So we did uh, keep the trailing arms and the links, um, the triangulated four link setup from the last suspension because it works so well. Um, and then we put it under this. So it's got the same 12 inch travel, 3.0 Kings. Uh, and we just basically trust the Dana 70 and bolted it all up. Now, in terms of uh, internals for these axles, uh, gears and lockers, so what's the gear and locker set up in the rear? The rear is uh, 48 gears with a Detroit locker. The front is uh, 48, obviously, also with a Knoll Racing power lock. Okay. Now, anything particular for the steering setup on this thing? Different steering gearbox, uh, crossover, what'd you do? Yeah, stock, uh, stock gearbox. Uh, it does have crossover steering with the Dyna it has a Dynatrack knuckles also um, So equivalent to a Dynatrax free spin kit what we call our RSC upgrade okay. that we sell on axles on our website um, So yeah crossover steering straight tie rod uh, no ram assist. I had ram assist in the past I never really liked the way it felt so we're just all I guess you call it naturally aspirated steering right right understood yeah. Uh, now, I know you've done a handful of different configurations for the back, and previously it had the big sort of canvas style top on it, and right now it's just kind of flat bed. So, yeah. what's, uh, w what's the long term uh, for the bed set up? Like, how do you really use it at this point? Well, I never really have any long term plans as far as the bed on this right. rig. I mix it up, I like it, just depends on um, how I feel and what I want, you know, what I'm using it for. Sure. So, until I got my RV. You know, we, I did have the soft top on it. We just put a rooftop tent on it um, and a big 270 awning. Um, I took that off recently because I don't plan on using it for a couple months. It might go back on, it might not, I don't really know. So I like the versatility of the flatbed. Um, I will use it for, you know, simple things like going to pick up uh, parts or load, a load of tires, you know. Um, I'll use it for whatever, you know, you know house stuff. Sure. You know, hauling, you know, it, it comes in handy. And we've got these, we've got um, six of these Mac tie downs which make it really nice to to strap stuff down but I've, I've changed this is like the fifth headache rack i think that we've put on this thing so i'm always changing it also um but and that's the beauty of it and how is it set up i see now you got some solar panels at the top a power tank yeah so it's got a 90 watt solar panel and that just is basically acts as a trickle charger for the the battery that's in the storage box um, the last configuration had both batteries in the box and the solar panel charged them because it was a diesel and diesels love to eat batteries um, this battery right now just runs my air compressor and that's it. Okay. And I can use it if I need to jump off. Um, but yeah, we've got the, we've got the new uh, tank from Power Tank and some uh, Molly panels and uh, the Baja Designs chase light and then a work light also from Baja Designs. So it's got a pretty good stance. I mean, you don't really see a lot of vans off-road in general. I mean, other than maybe overlanding, this is definitely more extreme. Uh, so you now are running a, what size tire you got on this thing? And, and what sort of the, how, how did you kind of nail on this size tire and that type of thing? So this, uh, we're running a 37, 1350, 17 on a 17 by eight uh, Innovate Racing G600 wheel. So um, I went with these Nittos because they're, I think they're a good compromise between an all-terrain and a mud terrain. Um, they're aggressive enough to do you know, daily driving use, but also occasional off-roading, which is what this thing does. And uh, I'm super happy with them. Yeah, the variety is what is what's key, especially on some of the vans that we've talked about before with the the, um, the heavier vans. Right. You know, they really need a tire that's up to the task of giving the traction and also holding the load, um, which is not easy to do. Is it? With these vans, like in terms of tire size, uh, what's like the most common, like, is it a 35 or 37? I know you build a lot of these. Like what has become yeah. sort of the mainstay for most guys that want a, a four wheel drive conversion van? Our most common tire size would be a 35, 1250, 17. Okay. Um, that's what we use probably 90% of the time on all of our builds. Right. Uh, we do occasionally build some vans on 37s um, and even on 33s, but 35, 1250, 17 is our bread and butter. Now, I know we kind of touched on this. Obviously, this thing came as two-wheel drive. Uh, what transfer case, like how did you make this thing four-wheel drive beyond putting the axles in? Sure. So th this, um, the, the new 7.3 Godzilla motors have a 6R140 transmission behind them. 
Um, as an E350, the unfortunately, the transmission has to come out to be converted to four-wheel drive. So it has to come out and do a partial tear down to change the output shaft before it'll take a transfer case. Right. Um, on the E450s, you don't have to do that. Oh, wow. You just pull the yoke off and pop the T-case on. Um, so we took the transmission out, sent it to uh, my guy at Ford. He converted it to four-wheel drive. We put it back in, and then we put the, um, the new process 1128 uh, transfer case behind that. New out of a Super Duty truck. Okay, so that's that's a newer style uh, T case. A lot of the older ones you're using like a 271. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we use 271s until um, and we still do until this uh, six speed came out. So okay. this this six speed in the vans showed up in like 2016. Right. Um, so we started using that new process T case, and then uh, once the T case was in, we had uh, 1350 CV drive shafts made for it front and rear. Okay. Now I know you've got sort of like a custom step slider combo. Is that something you guys build in house? Like what's uh, the deal uh, with that? It's a one-off for this. Uh, we don't normally van. A lot of guys ask for sliders on the vans. Um, it's not what I would call easy to do because there's so much variety right. um, and so much stuff on the frames um, of the vans, and the body hangs down so much lower than the frame. So you've got a real, you wind up with a real steep angle um, on a slider. So. This one we did, it's a, but it's just a one-off. Just like uh, pretty much everything on this van except the front bumper is a one-off. Right. Now what's, uh, so uh, I guess we should mention that. Now that's your aluminum front bumper? Yes. And how is it all configured? Uh, so it's our uh, FB002 front bumper, all aluminum, weighs 65 pounds, bare. Uh, we've got a worn VR12S winch in it uh, and a bunch of Baja design lights. Okay. Now. Anything else that you can think of that, I mean, obviously this bed is a huge undertaking. I know it's custom. Anything else that's been unique to this particular build? No, it's the same size cab back as the last one. Uh, my body guy told me he would never do it again because it was a lot of labor. It was really expensive just to get this grafted on seamless. Um, other than that, not really. This thing's pretty much the same as the last one, except for updated and better suspension up front right. and the turn radius. Now, if somebody wanted one of these, would you build it for them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That's, that's, see, there you go. Yeah. You, you can you can have one. I guess it's always like you build vans. It's kind of custom. Okay, that's yeah. that, that's good. Well, well, no, and I'm glad you brought that up because um, this van was also built as uh, kind of a tribute to my friend Chad that passed away um, because we were talking about building one for him. Right. Um, and Chad is the owner of Alpha Van yep. that we shot so many years ago. I'll, I'll, um, I'll put the link somewhere in here. To yeah, Alpha and Van. even so, the, the little the little CC sixty five to nineteen is a uh, is our tribute to him okay. um, because we were building we were in the works of building one of these for him. Wow. Uh, we were going to do a little bigger cab for his dogs and a shorter bed and probably put a camper on it. It was going to be really really cool. So um, I did also build this kind of as a uh, you know pay respect to him. My last van had a custom fuel tank, so it was tucked up. This one hangs down a little further than I'd like, but I didn't want to build a custom tank for it. Um, so it's a stock 40 gallon tank, and we just built an aluminum skid with a UHMW along on the bottom. Um, and I've had it on some trails already, and it hasn't hit, so um, it's good. I like that extra fuel capacity. Now, if people want to follow you and find out more information, how can they do that? You can follow us on Instagram, you join Off Road. Um, we post daily shop updates and uh, photos of every one of our builds. And uh, we also have a website, youjoinoffroad.com, and we're on Facebook at youjoinoffroad.